yes, I saw your survey, and um, the, 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 I think it was seventy percent were quite pessimistic about the year. I just wanted to know yeah. how, thing, how things are going. Yeah, it got even more pessimistic from from September to well, end of September to end of October. The level of pessimism was suddenly increased. I think because of the second lockdowns and all the news about things getting worse and sort of lockdowns in areas of Wales and Scotland and everything. But obviously since then, what we've had is the news of the vaccine, which I think will change things. We haven't done a, a survey since then, but obviously uh, that's going to change the sort of long-term view of people. And think that I think everyone will realise there's some light at the end of the tunnel, although it, take, it might take a very long time you know, time yet. We've still got the whole winter to get through somehow. Um, but yeah, it's been incredibly tough this year, obviously. Uh, I mean, our members were all virtu or virtually all closed from end of March, obviously, through to July. And then had to scrabble around to get as much as they could for um, July and August, a very sort of shortened window of... Uh, of a high season, um, which some of them did manage to get, you know, good bookings in that period. Some some didn't. It's patchy. Oh, really? Um, yeah. My impression it, it was it, seem... well, like, there's a shortage that when everything opened. There's a shortage. Is it not, not how you say? It? It's it, some people did well, but I'm always wary of saying everyone did well because we don't get members who say, "Oh no, we didn't here." Um, Obviously, there's always particular reasons, but uh, and and the trends were that the places in the countryside um, did well, and cities, particularly London, did badly yeah. um, for obvious reasons. Really, people wanted to get away from cities and be uh, away from people. Um, there was a period after the lockdown sort of ended in July where self catering did very very well. It, better than B&Bs because people wanted to, you know, to make sure they got away from a, anyone. So they didn't want to be in, even with other guests. So there was a bit of a boom for that. But then that sort of came crashing down when there were limits of sort of six people yeah, and yeah. limits on numbers of households that can go together. And that suddenly reversed it for the self caterers because when you've got a, a house which is like sleeps eight or 10 or 12 and nobody's allowed to go with more than six people or two households or whatever, you just can't sell it unless you can sell it at half the price or a third of the price. So that really hit them, unfortunately. Right. And, but not so much B and B's because obviously you can still stay, you know, two people in a room and, your guests are isolated from other guests. So it was, um, for the self-caterers, it was up and down. The B&Bs, it was more steady. But then when it got into the late summer, um, or early autumn, sort of September, October, the news got worse and worse about second waves and lockdowns and Wales closed the whole of the sort of North Wales. And... Um, then there were various closures in Scotland. Then, of course, we had the second lockdown across England, which we're still in. Um, so, so that was just, it got worse and worse. But as I say now, fingers crossed, let's hope we're seeing the, the beginning of the end or we're seeing the end on the horizon anyway. What we said to our members the other, the other day, let's hope it's on the horizon that we, we've got a, at least one... Um, vaccine the Pfizer one and hopefully the Oxford one and maybe others will be ready and can be rolled out next year mm. so but still we've got to get through a whole year and then people have been closed so long earlier in the season they were in a not a very they were in a pretty dire financial state often because some B&Bs didn't get necessarily any any financial support some of them fell through these various schemes yeah so normally at this time of year, yes, they're going into a difficult period. It's quiet, but they've had this, the high season and everything since Easter behind them. So they've built up those funds. Now we've had, they've been closed most of the time, had a shortened high season, and now we're straight into winter again. 
so it's very tough. And we, as the, the B&B Association, I mean, it's been an <laughs> incredibly strange year for us in the sense that all our members were closed for months, so nothing to do. But we were incredibly busy because we had to sort of lobby to fill in those gaps between government schemes because the, the original scheme that came out was only based on people paying business rates and half the B&Bs, half our members actually pay only council tax, not business rates, because they're, they're just small. They've got three, four rooms in their family house. Um, so we, we had to do lobby on that, and we were really glad when we got that uh, local authority discretionary grant fund. Yeah, yeah. yeah then right. then it showed, showed it had a few gaps in that, which we had to lobby for. <laughs> and the same in Scotland, uh, with various funds, it, it, it's just taken a long, long time. One of the one of the plus points is that we've had so much. I mean, not just us, but other trade bodies have had so much direct contact, dialogue with ministers and officials. But we had, we were in meetings every week with the UK government tourism minister, and separate meetings every week with the Scottish ones. Um, that 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 means that they now understand our sector a bit better than they used to which can only be a good thing, you know, for the long term. They, th this has just helped that understanding a bit more. And the understanding of how important the hospitality sector is generally to Britain. Yeah. And you can't imagine, I don't remember ministers talking about hospitality much in the past until this year, but now everybody's talking about it all the time. So, so that's good. Uh, that's a, a silver lining, you know, yeah, which yeah. will I mean, help, help in future. I mean, there's no doubt that a lot of people, I mean, this word staycation, which I always thought meant stay at home, but it doesn't. It's, it means stay in the UK, apparently. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people tried it and they wouldn't have done it. And we had a fantastic, fantastic weather-wise this summer. So a lot of... That was people, great, yeah. The most, I mean, I'd say the biggest complaint about holidaying in the UK. So, you know, hopefully a lot of people are, are seeing the benefit of holidaying in the UK now. Yes. And sort of selfishly for for the uk tourism it's obviously going to be quite difficult for a while to fly overseas yeah. um so that's going to sort of keep people at home and help british tourism help b and b's and guest houses um also that you know again thinking of sort of silver linings or positive things there's a massive um pent-up demand out there when people are do feel safe enough to you know venture out mm. and the, the sort of immediate danger is over i was reading just in the times this morning there's a hundred billion pounds ex excess or extra um household savings now yeah because people haven't been able to spend it yeah that's right so and they're still sitting on it you know on their hands a bit because people are, are obviously wanting to abide by the rules and scared of uh putting themselves or their you know family in danger but once that passes and we've got the vaccine rolling out and everything there's been this massive pent-up demand mm. so i think there's going to be a sort of mini boom next year hopefully yeah. hopefully that you know fingers crossed one of the issues i'm having or i'm thinking is a problem at the moment I don't know if you've spoken to your members a lot about cancellation policy policies because in my view when you're a small firm, it's perfectly reasonable to suggest that you don't refund the money, but you move it or you move the date or you, you hold the money for them to be used uh, at a later date. And obviously don't insist that extra payments are made or anything like that, pretty much just holding the deposit until it can be used. And I think that's perfectly reasonable. And, uh, and I feel that most of the visitors, are, I guess, are, are okay with that. But understandably, some aren't. They don't want a, another party holding, holding their funds. And I know this is a very common term with the larger holiday makers and uh, yeah, cruisers and what have you. What's your experience of that? And do you think that's stopping people from booking next year? I think that it's right that it is, you know that it is fair for businesses especially small businesses to have cancellation terms and uh it, it, with the, the industry couldn't really work if there were no cancellation terms at all and people would just book anything and then just just decide not to go at the last minute 
because obviously you, the, you, you, it's a, it's a two way transaction. So the hotel or B and B has kept that room for you, turned away other bookings, yeah. and has got it waiting for you. And so you can't, they can't sell it at the last minute. So that's always been the case. But then, obviously, when this pandemic happened, it was a totally new situation. So in a way, some of that got thrown out of the window and people just felt, well, we, we just have to let people cancel things where they can. But, but as you say, yeah, they very much tried to say, just can you just move that? Can we move? We'll move it for you and just keep them the, the funds. And to be fair, quite a lot of guests understood that and, and did it, were okay with it. Um, one thing that did cause a lot of very ill will early on March, April time was, was um, big um, online travel agencies sort of taking that out of B&B's hands and saying, we've decided to just refund everybody and, and we, we've given your money, as it were, back to them, regardless of anything else. That, you know, and that was their view of being good to the customer. Mm. But it wasn't so much good for B&Bs because they could have said, well, we could have negotiated with each client, maybe moved it forward. And now you've just taken what was our money and given it back unilaterally. And that caused a lot of fructions early on, uh, those kind of totally unilateral things. Yeah. But, but you know, up to now, cancellation terms is, is, is one of those things like insurance that people find really boring and don't think about. But now, with since COVID, cancellation terms are enormously important. And almost the first question that a lot of our members are saying, almost the first question people are asking is, what's your cancellation terms? You know, if I book now, can I, can I cancel if I can't get there or if I'm ill, uh, my family are ill or whatever it might be, or if the, the, we move from tier two to tier three or whatever it might be. So cancellation terms are massively important. Um, and insurance, which is another story, but mm. yeah. So we're sort of, uh, B and B's are feeling under pressure to sort of have much looser cancellation terms and have more, take more of the risk themselves mm. that if rules change, then that, that money that they thought was a booking that they're going to get in has just disappeared again. Mm. Um, it's unprecedentedly complicated because if one if the region you're visiting is locked in but you're not what are the rules there it's, i think it was particularly confusing when the, before the national um lockdown but i also think it, i mean i i tend to think the guests have been have been excellent and i think that it, it really shows the industry you've got the, the real personal connection with the guest you can like your members say negotiate terms because the other thing is that you know the b&b's would have already spent their marketing getting that booking in so uh, to get another booking, they'd have to pay out for marketing again. And yes. I by encouraging the guests to say, well, you're getting the first dibs on the dates when the dates become available. Hopefully we can con continue to have this situation where the guests are being reasonable, the companies are being reasonable. And obviously there'll be edge cases where people literally can't go on holiday, but then that goes into the realms of the insurance, does it? If they're poorly or whatever. Um, yes. Yeah. The only thing is on insurance that, in the past, we always used to say, well, look, yes, we have to charge a cancellation fee. But of course, if you've got travel insurance, that should be covered if you're ill or something. Mm -hmm. you know, that's covered. Obviously, with COVID, there's been big issues with insurance. And now the pandemic is, is, is out there. If you take out travel insurance today, mm -hmm. it's going to, I think, largely exclude COVID. So yeah. that's not going to help anyone. So it, <laughs> it's back down to the risk either the B&B bears it or the customer bears it or, you know, it, it's, it's a new, a new complexity to sort of negotiate for B&Bs. Have you noticed quite a lot of your members just giving up like the business and using this as a bit of a reason to just think? <laughs> it's difficult to know how, how many that would be. Uh, in, anecdotally, yes, a few. Right. Um, I think we had a couple of weeks ago about three in one week had just said to us uh we just don't feel we want to reopen again after this lockdown it's just one thing too many um but as you say it, those tended to be people who are you know were thinking about retirement anyway or were, were doing it um as a sort of lifestyle choice as many do rather than 
being in a secondary thing rather than being their sort of total business. So it's, it's difficult to, to judge how many. And overall, uh, during this lockdown, our members, member numbers have gone up rather than down. So we've gained more than we've lost. But it does, just anecdotally, there is some. And you can, you can imagine that if, if people are judging it, as a lot of B&B owners are, they're, it's not, they're not at the sort of necessarily um, peak of their working career where they've got, uh, not all of them are. I mean, some are, of course. But, but some are in a position where they've done another job for many years. They sort of semi-retired into running a B&B. And so that judgment about whether things have just got too much and too complicated and, and the, the fun's gone out of it, as it were, mm. that can make them make that judgment, oh, we'll, we'll just stop after this season. Or we, once this lock, we're, we're going into this lockdown, we won't reopen at the end of it. So there have been a few like that. I'm hoping it's yeah. not going to be too many in terms of the t- over in numbers of B&Bs. Yeah, well, I was yeah. going to say, do you, are you seeing more new people entering the market? Because it seems everyone I talk to wants to enter this market. They yeah, can- there have been. Uh, and people wanting to sort of do it, do it properly, as it were, rather than simply putting a room on a platform. They want to sort of research the market and get, get the rules right and things like that. So there are always new people coming into it, yeah. So, uh, but they tend to be different types than the ones that are closing often. So some of the, we're, we're, over time, and this is before COVID even, we've been losing some of the more traditional old-fashioned B&Bs. Places like Blackpool have had t- too much capacity. And some of those have uh, been closing, but the ones that have opened have been very different. They've been tended to be run by younger people. They tend to be more boutique style places, right. maybe places with a specific niche or theme. They do organic food or they're design led or whatever, right. and those kind of things. So the, the, the whole shape is very gradually changing of the industry. I think, to, and, and and that helps to attract younger people uh, because obviously the perhaps sometimes we've been suffering from our market or our audience has been growing older we need to make sure we attract younger people Um, and so it helps that there's there's more younger people coming into the business and that that's the image is gradually changing over time. To survive and to do a good job in this, in today's world, you have to be tech savvy and you have to have marketing knowledge. You have to, have, it, it's more than, you know, be, just be a good face for the business. You have to have those back end skills as well, don't you really? To yeah, especially as time goes on because uh, the younger generations don't want to book the way that the, uh, people did 20 years ago when, where, People would just pick up the phone and phone a few B&Bs and book, book by telephone. That, uh, that's dying out. So unless you're, you, you can be booked online, you're just gradually, you're, you know, your audience is going to gradually die. Yeah. And basically you, you, know, you need to have a, as a basic be, be bookable online because otherwise – nobody under 30 is going to basically book you at all no. because they just want to book on an iPad or a phone. When we started, it was more, much more difficult and you had a capital investment for technology and that now it's sort of relatively easy. You've got to set, yourself, set up your prices and rooms, of course, but basically you've got software that is just a, a, a per booking figure or a, a monthly subscription. So there's not even any capital investment. There's no excuse, really. No excuse, really, for not going online. Uh, and also, the, the average person is so, so much more tech savvy because you can't deal. You know, you can't book holidays, go online, do your banking unless you have some sort of skills. Yeah, and with things like photography, photography are massively important. Like the quality of the pictures of your B and B are just so important. We try and we keep emphasising that to our members. Do have a look at your, and, and during closure, we did a lot of webinars with, with Avivo where they hosted uh, webinars for uh, B&B owners. And it was all about, in the early days of, of sort of lockdown, we didn't know how long the lockdown was going to 
carry on for. There was no end dates, literally, and everyone was closed. So it was a question of trying to help people what they could do, uh, keep their morale up is one thing, but also help people what they could usefully do in their business mm. while it was closed. So, and we, you know, things like making sure your photography is absolutely the best it can possibly be. Take some new photos if you want to. Get your website sorted out. All those things that when people are busy, they think, oh, I'll do that maybe in the winter. And then you never get round to it. So in the, in the lockdown, we were saying, you know, do all those things. Make sure your, your, everything about your site is right. Check it um, as if you were a customer. Try and do searches and book and, and all of those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was quite depressing to go on for weeks and weeks with, you know, <laughs> thinking that there was, none of us knew when it was going to finish until, I can't remember when now, but it was, it was only a week or two before the July the 4th date in England that we sort of knew we were, that was it. Yeah. And then Scotland, I think, was 15th and uh, Wales was a different date. So yeah. it's, it's been really up and down. So what advice have you got for people for 2021 then? Do you, is, do you have any sp specific advice about, you know, maybe cancellation or whatever? Well, cancellation terms, we've always advised people to try and, um, the, you know, to look after their interests with cancellation terms. Uh, think about it carefully because it is important. You, you, you've got to protect yourself against big bookings especially suddenly disappearing at the at, at the last minute when you can't resell them so you, you have to have some kind of terms but there's no point in making it too onerous that you put people off and it's you know high, highly unfair um so you've got to get the balance right and, and that's still still the case but now that balance is pushed a little bit probably towards um you know allowing more late cancellations because that's just the mm. A legacy of COVID at the moment. People are obviously very, very, and very sensitive on th things like hygiene. I mean, hygiene's always been a, a key thing. People want rooms that they stay in to look as if nobody's ever stayed in them before yeah. and be very clean. But obviously, since COVID, hygiene and safety or uh, health, health is the, the most important thing. So and that probably won't go away quickly, even once there's a vaccine and everything else. People will still be, I think, sensitive to, you know, how, how are you cleaning your place? How are you, what, what sort of protocols have you got in place? Yeah, I'd say and that's that probably positive, actually, that people are yeah. taking cleaning and personal hygiene much more seriously. Yes, and so what it will mean for B&B owners is when if pre-COVID, nobody would really market themselves by saying, yeah, we're very, come to us, we're very clean. Whereas now that almost, that is a marketing thing. You can say, well, we've got, for instance, uh, we've got, we're good to go from the, AA, from the Visit Britain or the COVID confidence scheme from the AA or things, those kind of schemes. They can emblazon that on their website and say, yeah, look, we've got, we're very, covid aware we're very safe we've got all these procedures in place this is what we've done and that just reassures people so they don't have to ask so many questions they can see that you've done that um, they're more likely to book with you and less likely to book with somebody who may be just as clean but hasn't thought of actually mentioning it mm -hmm. they're just ex expecting expecting people will assume it but mm -hmm. you can't necessarily think people will assume it because they'll they're going to look at all the places they could book and make a judgment. So these guys say they have got a COVID confident from the AA and they're doing this and that and the other. These other ones don't say anything. So yeah. I better book with the other one. Uh, so you can't take for, for granted that your customers will just assume that you'll comply with the rules. You just tell, tell them, just make sure you emphasize it and then they know. So that's going to, I think, be a just a key part of marketing for a, a while, yeah, a year or two or more, maybe forever, um, in, in some aspects. Yeah, I agree. Excellent. So, but other than that, but you think, so up down 2021, do you think it's going to be a, a, a better the year or, or say? Well, it, it can hardly be worse. <laughs> it can hardly be worse than 2020. Uh, 
yeah, I think that obviously that what we don't know is sort of when things will open up. I mean, uh, uh, how quickly does the, the vaccine come in and the mass testing, those two things, mm. mass testing and vaccine. Yeah. Uh, and also how quickly international tourism opens up with testing at airports and stuff like that. Because obviously in the, that's another thing we lost this year. Um, the, uh, international guests. Right. We hope that will be coming back next year. Plus there'll be this huge pent up demand for staycations from British people. So it, it sh should be a very good year next year. But it depends on when things can open up. Will we lose the whole of the first quarter again through lockdowns and things, restrictions, and start opening up from March? Who, who knows? Mm. Mm. If it does, even if we do lose that most the first quarter and then the rest of the year is pretty unrestricted, that would allow a pretty good year. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Because of the because of the boom that yeah. that we hopefully will get the pent up demand, the money people couldn't spend this year, the fact that people have been stuck at home looking at the same four walls for yeah. months, yeah. and they just desperately want to get out and about and see things, go places. Yeah, yeah, and the resistance to travel abroad, I think, is still there as well, like you said earlier. Well, that's fantastic. 